Hey everybody, it's your girl Angie. Welcome back to Kiss My Cheeks TV. It is time to have some Survivor talk and I'm excited to talk about it. It was another great episode of Survivor last night. It wasn't as, it was not as exciting as the first three episodes, but it still gave. And I was just a little bit upset because it was another hit to my fantasy team. <laughs> And I'm taking my Survivor Fantasy team very seriously. And I'm down to just, what, three more players. And one of the three is on the rocks. But let's let's jump into it. We're going to talk about my power rankings. We're going to talk about my fantasy team at the end. The episode did not give that much. I'm more excited for next week because we know a swap is coming. So let's talk about it. We opened the episode with the blue team back at camp. They just voted out Ethan. Rob and Poverty were blindsided. Adam was blindsided. Adam is recognizing that he made a mistake by telling Rob the plan to vote out Poverty. So he understands this was a huge survivor mistake. I don't know how he can fix it. He goes on an apology tour. Everyone is pretty much reading. I'm telling them, like, man, you, you messed up. And Michelle was like, see, now you know what happens when you cross your alliance. So, you know, get in line. Do you all think the alliance will take him back? I'm going to say yes for this reason. Because next week is a swap. Now, I don't know if you know what the swap consists of. Put it in the comments. But is it going to be, since we're at 15... Is it going to be three tribes of five? Okay. Or is it going to be someone comes back from the edge and it's two more tribes of eight and we just reshuffle? I hope my girl Natalie can come back because then my fantasy team is back on it. Natalie or Tyson can come back and then I feel good about my fantasy team again. But moving on, I believe Adam can work his way back in because with this swap if he's on a team let's say they go to three fives and say it's jeremy michelle and two people from the red team say sandra and sarah and nick i mean adam is in the middle jeremy and michelle ain't crazy they gonna pull adam back in to get out sarah or Sandra. So I think with this swap, if his numbers can line up correctly, he can get back in or say he goes somewhere and there's Sandra, Sarah, and Nick. And it's just Jeremy. I don't want to say Jeremy, but Jeremy and Adam. Adam can kind of throw Jeremy under the bus and go over here with the red team. So I feel like this swap is going to help Adam out. Maybe he can maneuver a new alliance. I don't feel like Denise is going to throw him away. I don't. I think Jeremy and Michelle are done with them. But Denise and Ben will let him come back. So, I ain't gave up hope on you, Adam. But I, I do feel like if the blue team would have lost this week, they fool enough to vote out Adam. I don't know what it's going to take for them to vote out Rob or Poverty. I, we just got to keep watching to see. But, okay, now they over here at the edge. <clears throat> over on the edge, they get the um, map, or not the map, but the list. Everyone can get a fire token today if you complete this task. You got to climb up this mountain, hike, 20 logs, bring one log down at a time, and you can get a fire token if you can do this before the sun goes down. Now, I'm thinking, that's not too bad. I mean, 20 times up these steps, that ain't too bad. But when I actually watch them do this, they have to walk across the beach. Walking in sand is already a workout. Then you got to climb up these stairs. Okay, that ain't too bad. But you got to go up the stairs and then hike up some rocks. I'm like, they calves have to be on fire while carrying a log 20 times i don't know what time they started but they only have until the sun goes down everyone completed it we know this natalie is a beast 
she has five, four tokens now. I forgot the list, but I think once you get four, you can buy an advantage to get back into the game. I hope she gets back into the game. <clears throat> Ethan passed out. I felt bad for him, but medical came, checked him out, and told him to slow down, take a break. You ain't got to be first. Just complete the challenge. And he did that. He slowed all the way down. I'm just happy he didn't get pulled because I don't want anyone's game to end by getting pulled by medical. Not true. He already on the edge, but he has the ability to come back. Danny and Amber took the slow and steady route. Everyone completed the challenge. Everyone got their fire token. Everyone showed teamwork by going up one more time with Ethan so he can complete the task. I thought that was amazing. Now, back on the Blue Tribe, Adam is becoming a worker bee. He getting all the fire sticks. He getting the sand to scrub out the pots. He fixing the coconut soup. Adam is doing, he's getting all the water bottles. Adam is working. Denise recognizes Adam is a changed man. He is working. He's not laying around camp trying to come up with strategy. And so Rob in poverty pulled Adam to the side trying to get a little bit of tea. And Adam is like, I ain't no fool. I done messed up once. I ain't going to mess up twice. But just the visual of you sitting with Rob in poverty was a mistake. Because if anybody would have walked by and saw that, they wouldn't have believed anything you had to say to explain why you're talking to them. So you still making mistakes, Adam. You still making mistakes. You have if you want back in with your main alliance, you have nothing else to say to rob a poverty, period. He recognized that they were trying to just get some information out of him, and that's when he got up and left. <clears throat> rob, but he didn't recognize that Rob would just lie anyway. Because if someone comes up to you and say you was talking to Rob and Poverty, you might say, Yeah, but I ain't say nothing. You don't know who saw you over there, so you can't even really lie. He's still making mistakes. Rob did what he did. He went up, told Jeremy, you know, what are we going to do about Adam? Because he was tripping yesterday and he's still talking to me, trying to make plans. And I'm like, Jeremy and Michelle immediately are like, okay, we got to get rid, get rid of Adam. But I'm like, Jeremy, Michelle, what would make you believe anything Rob has to say? Why wouldn't you, your first thoughts immediately go to Rob is over here he's never come to you before coming up with strategy or what should we do about so and so so your first thought should be rob is next on the chopping block he should have been on there a long time ago but we here we current not in the past why is rob telling me this is he just trying to save his own ass so we can get adam out instead of him or poverty if we lose that should have been what Jeremy was thinking, but they so mad at Adam from last week, they can't see what Rob is doing this week. I don't know why y'all people letting Rob and Poverty get this far into the game. I don't understand it. Now they flash over to the red team before the challenge, and the first thing I noticed is, why does Sarah want Tyson to blow his breath in her face? That is nasty. Now, I don't care how bored you are on this island. Y'all ain't got no toothpaste or no toothbrush. You know that man breath stink. Your breath stink. Why? And I'm happy Tyson was like, no, I'm not going to do that. <sighs> it was just, I just couldn't believe that. That has nothing to do with the game. But this is just an opportunity for Tyson to start planting his seed about, he call it the unconnected. And I'm like, man, he picked them up. Wendell, Yule, Sophie, and Nick. He was like, they gonna start coming against us and that's why they got rid of Amber the last time. They don't want the people with connections to, um, they want us to fight against each other and send us home. But already, Sandra is like, mm-hmm, yeah, mm-hmm, yeah, we, we don't, Nick, he gone. But Sandra in her mind is like, Tyson, you already had my name in your mouth. So, you going home next, buddy. I don't care what you sitting up here talking about them sitting over there. I'm working with them. 
you going home next. I like Sandra. I like, one thing I like about this season that you don't see on new seasons with new players and all new people wanting to play Survivor need to watch what they're doing. It doesn't matter what plan people come up to you talking about. People are going, yeah, I think we should vote out Nick. Yeah, I think we should vote out Tyson. People are giving you that esteem of, or that security of your plan is a yes, but in their mind, they're like, mm -mm, yes, I can't do it. But they're like, yes, we would. <laughs> but I like that. Everyone is doing it. No one is being like, huh, no, maybe we shouldn't. Like, people are giving people the yes, and then they go to their alliance and be like, so-and-so talking about voting out Nick. I think that's how you should play because once you start telling people, no, nah, I don't think we should vote out Nick, they're going to start doubting you and then now your name becomes a target because you got an issue with their plan. I've seen it happen so many times, but that's just something I noticed. But let's get into this challenge. The first thing from the challenge, the red team has to sit two people out and Sandra is like me, I'm out. And Poverty threw her some shade. It was like, we just need to call that the Sandra bench. And Sandra's like, girl, I ain't got no problem with that. I have no problem. The Sandra bench. And Sandra went over there and sat out along with Tony. Now, Sandra, next week, I think regardless, if they pull somebody from the edge and go to eight, especially if they get down to five, you don't have that idol anymore, Sandra. That idol ran out this week. You are in trouble because next week you have to perform on a team. And if that team loses, you are automatically the weakest link and they're going to send you home because we don't know when the merge is coming up. And no one wants to sit on a tribe with you, especially at five, and y'all keep losing. You're going to be the first one to go home. So, Rob is worried about the tribe swap next week, but Sandra is really the one who should be worried. Her team needs to be stacked or she gone. She gone. But this challenge was good. It, they had to swim, pull in a boat, and then jump on the ladder and, you know, knock the key down. The red team had about a 10, 15-minute lead. Had to have. Because the blue team did not strate strategically put one person in that boat who was tall enough to reach those keys. Now, mind you, they didn't know the height reach probably when they were picking, but they should have at least put Ben, maybe not Rob, maybe not Ben, but maybe Jeremy, who else was swimming? It was Poverty, Adam, I don't know, but one of them should have at least put Adam out there to swim. One person that was tall enough should have been up there banging off them keys because that's what slowed up all their time. So let's get to the red team. I promise you they had to have at least a 10-minute lead. I would say more, but I'm going to at least give them 10. And then Jeff said, <clears throat> I'm getting excited, y'all. Let me calm down. Jeff said, that Nick has done this challenge before, this puzzle, and he has won doing this puzzle before on David and Goliath. I was listening to um, Rob had a podcast at work, and they just threw out there, do we think Nick threw the challenge? And a big part of me is thinking yes, because why did they have to take this puzzle? They had it 50% completed before the blue team even got their keys in the water. And it seemed like, I don't think Sarah would have threw it, and I feel like Sarah was trying to put it together, but I believe they were looking for Nick to kind of be the mental one. And I just don't, I don't see how they felt like they had to take the whole thing apart. <laughs> it just seemed very throwish. To me, like I, I would, I would put five on it. I would put five on it. If they did not 
throw the challenge. Do we think production put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten on the blue piece? <laughs> on the blue team's puzzle pieces because i mean rob is a great puzzle master but they had a 15 minute head start like when i saw the blue team come back and win that i was just yelling at the tv i was like i couldn't believe now mind you rob is good because the blue team has always been in the back they've never had a head start and rob has always brought the blue team back in the challenge with the puzzle with maybe one or two pieces left and the red team just happens to pull it out that's why i don't under and they ain't never had no 15 minute lead they usually have a one or two minute lead so i don't understand how you have a 15 minute lead <laughs> and you can't finish this puzzle that rob and michelle put together it looked like in 60 seconds it's either, I'm going to believe one or the other. I'll put five on either one. Either Nick was definitely throwing the challenge or the, um, the blue team got some production help on their puzzle pieces. I ain't going to say production did nothing, but it was just an amazing win. So now that the blue team has won, the red team has to go to tribal council. I feel like Tyson was going home no matter what. And I believe the plan for whoever was going to go home if we lost was already made before the challenge even started because Sandra wasn't having it. I did like how it started off with, okay, Tyson got everybody together, Nick going home. And then Yule, Yule was never going to let Nick go home. And then Wendell was like, why would we do that? There's going to be a swap. We know this. Why would we want Tyson to hook up with Rob and Poverty? So he got to go. He on my fantasy team, I know, but he has to go. We ain't really worried about Kim. And then it seems like at the last minute, Tyson was able to convince Tony, and Tony was able to convince Sandra that Nick should be the one to go home. But that's all editing. They could have had them conversations days ago. Like, I really feel like... Before the challenge even started, they knew Tyson was going to be the vote. But then we get to tribal council, and it was a good tribal council. They're talking about the vote will expose who's in the alliance, but we don't want the vote to really expose too much. I thought that was, when Yule talks, I listen, <laughs> because he speaks Survivor Game. And he's going to be a threat. And he's also on my fantasy team. I think you will, will make it to the merge. He will make it deep into the merge. But he's going to be a huge threat in the merge. And they're going to gun for him. I can see it. Because when he talks, people listen. And he speaks survivor talk that makes so much sense. <clears throat> And then they went into a conversation with people, playing with people that they idolize, that they're fans of. And I thought it was so cute. Now, mind you, when Nick wrote down Kim's name at Tribal Council, I said, Nick, you a goner. <laughs> I said, you ain't even got the vote right. You voting for the wrong person. I just knew. <laughs> and I wish maybe next week we'll find out some more about who told Nick to write down Kim because the other people write down Kim. Like, I didn't understand where that came from. When I saw it, I was just, I just knew, okay, Nick going home. And I did feel like a sign of relief because I was like, okay, at least my fantasy team is still being tagged. But it ended up, Tyson, you're out of here. Bye. And so I thought it was nice. And he was like, here's a coin from your idol. I thought, I don't understand why Tyson gave Nick his fire token. I just knew he would have gave it to Kim. So this further makes me believe that this poker alliance is non-existent. It's just something that Yule and Wendell got in their minds and it was an easy way to get Amber and Tyson out. But I don't really feel like it was anything to it because he could have gave his fire token to Rob. He could have gave it to Poverty. Like, if it was a true alliance, he would have gave it to someone he had a pregame alliance with. Why Nick, of all people? I thought it was cute. 
So we do know next week there will be a swap. I don't know what number it will be, but I'm excited for the swap. Swap week. Swap weeks are always exciting because the game is reshuffled. And I didn't like how the deck was stacked at the beginning of the game anyway. So it's going to be reshuffled. And I can't wait to see who gets where. So let's talk about my fantasy team real quick. You know, my fantasy team are the top five people that I picked before the season even started that I thought had the best chance to win the game. And then I also did my version of a power ranking, one through 20, of the rankings is based on who I think has the best chance to win the game. It doesn't have anything to do with boot order, any of that. It's who I think has the best chance. So let's get into it. Number one is Wendell. He's my winner pick. I think Wendell is sitting pretty. No one is mentioning his name. He's not seen to be the leader of anything, but I think he does collaborate with his alliance equally. He's not seen as the leader. Wendell is sitting pretty. Adam, I think the swap is going to save him, but if the blue team would have lost, I believe they would have been fool enough to get rid of Adam. I think Adam will be okay for a while depending on how this swap pans out. Natalie is gone. Tyson is gone. <sighs> that hurts so much. But then I still have Yule. Yule is too smart. He is a threat. He's going to be this he's going to be seen as the leader of this non-connected alliance and he's going to get targeted sometime mid-merge. So that's my fantasy team. I feel really good about my fantasy team. If they can swap with some numbers, I'll feel really good. The only thing that's going to hurt my team, if some of them get caught out there and they're in the minority of the swap. I just hope that doesn't happen. My number six player is Jeremy. Jeremy is an honorary. He's not, I said I wasn't going to do that. He is only an honorary fantasy member because I said if Jeremy won over anyone on my fantasy team, I would be excited and wouldn't be upset that I lost any money. <laughs> so, Jeremy is the only one who I wouldn't be upset if I lost my fantasy pick money. So, Jeremy, I think, is sitting pretty... He got rid of enough people to where now Rob and Poverty are his shields. He's not working with Rob and Poverty, but no, what, no matter where Rob or Poverty land, they're always going to be a huge threat. So Jeremy is sitting kind of good right now, but Jeremy is a threat himself. And if Natalie comes back in the game, we've got to go through that whole thing of Jeremy Natalie all over again. Kim... I think has settled. I don't think she's on anyone's radar right now. I don't even think Kim was even a major threat in this poker alliance thing. I think it was mostly Tyson and Amber getting back with Rob. So I think Kim could sit pretty for a while. Depending on the, this is all depending on these swaps. Sophie, I like. If I did have the ability to switch out a fantasy player, I would switch Sophie for Adam. I think Sophie can make a good run for this. She's not perceived as a leader. And then Tyson, this episode was like he couldn't even remember Sophie's name. So Sophie is playing really low-key game, but she's a major player. But people don't know it. Um, number, oh, Ethan is gone. He was number nine. Poverty. And Rob are right at 10 and 11. That's my um, mid-range power rankings. They're in trouble now. A lot of key people from their alliances are gone, like Tyson, Ethan, Amber. Their threat level is a lot more exposed now. I think Rob on a swap, especially if they go to five, will be safe because he's good at the challenges and he'll be needed. Poverty could be in trouble at this swap. Nick, I think Nick could be okay. Ben is playing a really good game. I'm impressed by Ben so far. Denise has 
went back to not hardly ever getting any screen time. That could be good or bad. We'll see as the show goes on. Sarah and Tony are people who I have the bottom at my power ranking list because I just knew they were going to get on TV and cut up. I just knew they were going to have huge egos, get on this TV, challenge Sandra. I had no, I never would, I would have lost so much money if I would have bet that Sarah and Tony are working with Sandra. Like, I just knew they were going to be talking about getting rid of the queen, got to queen slayer i'm the best female player and tony would be running wild i just knew they would be voted off but they're playing really good games and i really am enjoying seeing sarah and tony <clears throat> sandra she doing all right but this swap i think sandra gonna be the first one gone with this swap because who wants sit out sandra on their team <laughs> losing challenges no ma'am and michelle who i have all the way at 19 She's playing a really, really good game. She has game moves that I would give her credit for. Definitely her and Jeremy get credit for that Ethan move. So I'm really proud of Michelle. I don't even really see anyone dragging her to the end like I thought she would be. Like, if Michelle gets at, to the end, I think she would have some good reasons to say she deserves to win the game. Those are my power rankings. I feel really good about this season. I feel... Everyone still has a major opportunity to make major moves, just not against my fantasy team. <laughs> All right, y'all. Get in the comments. Let me know what you thought about this week's episode. Let me know what you think about my fantasy players, the power rankings. Let me know who your favorite player is, who your winner pick is. What do y'all think about the swap? You think they're going to go to eight or to five? You think we'll see Natalie cash in her coins and jump off of the edge? Like, I'm just so many what's going to happen next week. I just can't wait to see it. So many what ifs. All right, y'all. Go ahead. If you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and subscribe to Kiss My Chicks TV. I'm going to be reviewing Survivor it's just going to happen. Like, I love Survivor. I'm not going to stop one week reviewing these episodes. So go ahead and subscribe so you can catch next week's review. And like, comment, share, all that good stuff. And I will see you next week for the next episode. All right, y'all. Bye.